Now, there are stepping stones along the way. Once you have a hint that your mind is powerful, that your consciousness is, is very powerful, then you can have experiences of what you could call manifesting, where you start to see your thoughts manifest before your eyes. And that's a very helpful step because that's showing you the power of your mind. Anything that shows you the power of your mind and the power of thought is a helpful step on the journey. And so, I've had a lot of those kind of experiences myself and very many mystical experiences, very strong, very convincing, but also they always came with, with this feeling like, I'm showing you this, I'm, I'm using this to show you something, and the something was the power of the mind. And then it seemed to reach a point in consciousness and awareness where it was like, but, even if you could manifest anything that you think you want, wouldn't you rather have an experience of eternal happiness? Wouldn't you trade all that manifesting for a consistent state of peace? Wouldn't you go that extra step to know your source, to know your creator, to know yourself, your true identity, that's literally beyond even the manifesting, beyond the stage of manifesting? And for me, it was a big yes. It was like a huge yes, like yes, I want to be consistently happy, joyful. I want peace of mind. I want to have a state that transcends all judgments, all comparisons, all illness. Every doubt, I want to, to live in a state of certainty. That is more important to me than even manifesting what I believe I want. Because I had to come to the realization that I didn't really know what I wanted. <laughs> You know, and, and that that I that was trying to manifest was still spinning its wheels. And having a lot of fun actually spinning its wheels. But there was something beyond that. There was something more. And to me that's what spiritual awakening is all about. Where you get to that point where you say, yes I'm willing to know who I am. I'm willing to wake up from this dream. And I'm willing to accept the happy dream of non-judgment. Now what is a happy dream of non-judgment? Well it's simply a state of mind where you do not have an opinion about anything. Absolutely anything. It doesn't matter what people, it's political, it can be about nature, it can be about music, it can be about movies. It's coming to a place where you don't have an opinion. You don't take a side. Now why is it important not to take a side? It's because the ego made up the dualistic system of sides. The ego invented all this variety and multiplicity and sides and when we take a side we reinforce the ego in our awareness and not love. Jesus tells us in The Course in Miracles that love makes no comparison. He says, comparison must be an ego device, for love makes none. That love is a state of perfect acceptance. It's the state of what is. It's the state that goes beyond the dualistic good and bad, right and wrong, ethics, morality. All of those still would fit in the category of judgments. And in order to forgive, we have to begin to see that we can transcend even morality, even those stepping stones that helped us along the way.